What is up guys, Team Red here, and we're back with a, um, you know, some dual gameplay. I haven't done these in a while, um, and the reason we do this is we want to have fun and we want to test some decks, and at the same time, we want to you know, show you guys our ideas. And um, so what we have here on the left is a 60 card brilliant invoked. Uh, Monarch Swan and I am playing a 60 card Dino Shadow Phantom Knight variant and you can see that I, I haven't I didn't start really well I didn't open with any of my play starters and all I can do now is just defend myself with Ash Blossom and um, Even then it's kind of hard because I have no idea what to Ash in uh, my friend's deck here because there's so much going on in his deck and it's so hard to follow but you know you do your best but at the end of the day you feel like you got punished and you're like, uh, oh, all right, well, I'll ash the next one, uh, the right one the next time. And, um, even then you're like, oh, phew, did I do the right thing? But anyway, I was going to summon Raiden and he's going to make, um, Minerva to mill some more cards. Now you have to understand that a lot of the Monarch cards have grave effects and he's paired it up with Light Swarms and other one-offs that benefit from, um, being milled so the main focus here is 60 card mill deck and um, he opens up with soul charge <laughs> the funny thing is he always seems to get soul charge in his 60 card deck um, but that's why this game is fun because anything could happen really um, now he's just gonna go off I didn't open really well I set one card and defend myself with an ash blossom and um, all I can do now is just watch because I don't have any response um, what I want you guys to just have a look at is, he's just going to flex his muscles, but I want you to look at what the deck can actually do. Um, once the Ridger hits the board, he filters his hand and draws one, and then he's going to explode. Um, you know, Slash Draw, um, we're actually testing Slash Draw as well. Uh, it came out in the new Battle of, Battles of Legend. Um, it's actually pretty good. At the end of the day, it's a discard one, draw one. So that's always good. And it doesn't really affect our decks that much because we, left, we love to discard stuff and we love to mill stuff. So you draw one and then you mill stuff as well. And then you get to recycle your graveyard. In a deck like, excuse me, in a deck like my friends and my Shadow Dino deck, um, it's it pairs up perfectly with our playstyles. So we're just testing it here, and you can see that he has milled, or his graveyard is set up uh, very nicely now, and his Suruji is helping him make his plays as well, and now his deck is going to go off. Um, Uh, Erebus is actually going to shuffle one card from my hand back. Um, that's always annoying. It helps remove stuff and becomes more annoying. Um, he's going to play... Well, he has some continuous uh, spells now. Um, the only issue is if he plays those spells, he gets locked out of the extra deck. Um, he has Strike of the Monarchs in his um, graveyard at the moment, which lets him to change you know, attributes in his um, field which helps him get into other monsters like Curious, um, for example. It also helps him make invoked monsters if he needs to. So he's going to pass, and I'm going to play Slash Draw. And um, I count how many cards he has on his field, and I get to mill at least one, two, three, four, five, around six cards. But what he's going to do is actually use um, his ether to tribute summon to um, lower the amount of cards on his side of the field. So um, I pay cost to this card, and that gives him a window to respond. So he's going to play his trap to filter as to recycle as well and draw one, and then he tribute summons and now he only has five cards so I mill one less um, in my deck you want to mill as much as you can so I think that was a pretty good play I draw one or reveal one or it's a phantom knight now I'm not doing well in this game um, all I can do now is just to um, recycle as many resources as I can and try and hold out um, but to be honest I probably should have scooped and went into game two but um, I'm pretty stubborn sometimes so I'm just gonna keep playing 
but um, I'm glad I kept playing because I want to show you guys what um, my friend's deck can do. Um, now Aether's effect is going to summon Kuraz and Kuraz helps pop the uh, cards on his side of the field to draw um, some cards. Um, the thing you have to understand is that his deck keeps on drawing and he has all well he can maintain resources in his side of the field in his hand and graveyard and also um, has a lot of grinding and recovery game as well. So that's one of the hardest parts to play against. Um, I'm going to do my best here and summon my Phantom Knights. Um, usually you want these in your grave um, for their effects um, and that's about it. Um, hard drawing into them is, isn't that great. Um, because when you summon them, they don't really do anything, they don't give you any advantage at all, um, and you waste your normal summons, so um, that's all I can do with them, um, so I kind of want to cut them out, but I love the cards, so um, I just keep on playing with them. Um, I mill free, I didn't mill anything, I wish I got that fossil dig in my hand, but um, what can you do, probability is not on my side. Um, now all I can do is just battle and I have to get rid of his cuirass because if I don't, Aether's effect sends it back to his hand so he can use it again. So um, that's all I can do and I'm um, gonna change Dante to defense by its effect and all I can do is pass. But before I do that, um, I'm gonna banish my Phantom Knight to search for Fog Blade and that's my only defense left. So it's my friend's turn. Slash draw. Discount one, mill. Control one, he draws into his continuous spell again, but um, ED is in grave. Now that sets him up for his plays as well. Fancy and draws and then banishes to keep his um, advantage going. And he's going to reveal tenacity and I believe, yeah, Stormforth. I think my logic here is if he reveals two tenacities and one other monarch's spell or trap, that means he really wants that card. And um, if I give him the tenacity, he can keep on fitting his deck. So I don't really want to do that. So. Uh, my judgment was, okay, I'll just give him the card straight up so he doesn't, um, you know, fin his deck. And um, of course he has the solar recharge in his hand and it keeps on milling. And he's going to summon uh, Lumina, which is going to get him back a uh, Let's Swan. Alright, uh, he's going to mill with uh, Lumina. And I believe what he'll do next is use Snow. There you go. Um, Snow's really annoying. Um, so he wanted to banish um, Giant Rex to summon it again, so he gets more monsters in the field, but he realizes, you know, you don't have enough zones on his uh, side of the field to do it. So um, he's just going to opt for a Minerva to mill some more cards. Uh, he's going to detach Snow, so Snow was not once per turn, and he's going to draw one off of Minerva's effect, and he just showed you um, his hand size, and it's huge! And um, he's going to normal summon Alistar and search for Invocation. Now, if you haven't noticed already, he, um, he can maintain his card advantage um, and his hand size quite well, so this deck is really resilient, and um, he can maintain advantage. So he's going to banish uh, Strike of the Monarch to turn everything into a certain attribute, uh, so light, so then it'll let him make a Curious to send um, whatever card he wants from the deck to the graveyard. He's going to send Damage Juggler, which will then let him um, search for a, a uh, Clown. But first he's going to shuffle because um, after he's searched, well after he's sent his card, Curious has to mill three cards. And uh, he's milled Erebus, which lets him get back a Monarch Spell or Trap. Um, he's going to search for... Uh, Trick Hat, well, Trick Hat or something. I can't remember his name, but it's the Earth Level 4 Clown, which can special summon itself if there's two or more monsters on the field. 
Uh, he's going to use Snow again, and finally this time he can get uh, Giant Rex on the field. And his hand advantage is always very, very large. Um, so many cards in his hand is pretty much his whole deck. Uh, he's going to keep on making monsters, and I don't know what he's going to make again. I was going to make Utopia to try and beat over whatever I have, but um, I don't know why he did it. I think he just did it for fun, because he can. Um, he's going to make Crispina to get rid of my uh, back row. Um, so Clown comes down to special summon itself to banish my back row. Now I probably should have used Fog Blade a long time ago, but um, I was just amazed by what he was doing and I completely forgot that I had it on my side of the field and Crispina is going to burn me. Um, at this rate, all he needs is just enough damage to kill me. Um, I have less than 4k, so that's um, not a problem. He's going to make uh, Underclock because of its link marker is really useful and you can reduce the attack of somebody's monsters to ensure that you do enough damage. Um, he's going to banish Jet Synchron that he milled. I'm surprised he didn't actually use its grave effect, but you know, what can you do? Um, he's going to make Purgatrio, which will put him at a uh, position where he can deal enough damage to finish me off so um yeah i just hope you guys enjoyed that um i'm not salty over losing i just i'm happy i'm happy that we recorded this because it really shows you uh, what his deck can do and um how much advantage he can generate from it um if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment um but yeah hope you guys enjoyed that that's game one and i hope you guys come back for game two